Hey, Chris Lipe here with special guest Lucas Magyar from the band Veil of Maya. And I've got three tips for singing better live. If you enjoy these tips and you want to go deeper with Lucas and his approach, click the link below and join the free warm-ups course. Lucas Magyar's warm-ups to outrun vocal fatigue. Tip number one. Know your approach. You're gonna have the material that you have to perform live. Break all those parts up into little itty bitty sections. How do I wanna execute this part? What dynamics do I wanna use? Go through those parts over and over individually, line by line, even sometimes syllable by syllable to really figure out how you need to execute each little tiny part that goes into the whole piece. So you don't start by singing these songs all the way through to learn them? No. You use recording too, right? Yep. To make this happen? I'll do a lot of like video or audio recordings just from my phone. Uh-huh. Because then you can do it anywhere. You know, you don't need to be in a studio atmosphere. You can just record it on, the, on a device that you have. A big thing out there is like, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to record my vocals in the studio a little piece by piece because I want to be able to do it live. But what I'm hearing you say is that by taking the approach <laughs> of recording things piece by piece, even in an informal way, you train yourself to know your approach yeah. so that you can do it live. It's actually the opposite of what conventional wisdom would say, right? Oh, you want to sing this song all the way through? Practice singing it all the way through. Well, maybe eventually, right. but not before you really know how you're going to approach every little nuance exactly yep. the way you want to. Yeah, and it takes time and you're going to run through, you know, 14 different ways that you don't like. Mm. But as long as you know what you want and you know how to create those sounds, then you can start to build it into context. As counterintuitive as that is, it's so valuable. Tip number two? Vocal safe cardio. In order to be in shape enough, a big part of that is bodily fitness. Right, because singing and performing is tiresome and it obviously increases your heart rate. So if your cardio and your body can't handle the amount of energy you're exerting, your voice is going to fall apart pretty quickly because you're trying desperately just to get air and to like keep moving. So as you're practicing for singing live, do you intentionally insert movements that you wouldn't otherwise insert if you were just sitting at your house, right? Like sometimes because you, I mean, live, you move around a ton. Yep. I mean, you're, you're running back and forth and turning around and jumping and, and that takes a toll. I've, I've over-exaggerated it to the point where I vocalize like while cycling. Right. And wow. not like slowly, like extensive bike rides. And then I'm not going to do the whole set while I'm doing that. Like, no. Good luck. But your physical activity is so over the top exaggerated that just vocalizing anything at that point is going to be difficult. And if you can get through a couple passages of a song when your body's literally mm -hmm. winded, that's that does a lot for you. But if you know your approach based on what you were doing before, that becomes muscle memory that that comes across uh, through your body more easily. So you don't have to think about it as much while you're performing live. And then you introduce the cardio aspect of it into the practicing. Right. And that helps you be prepared for when you are slightly winded so that you can still do your approach right. live. Yeah, because you can know it forward and backwards. But if your body's not just, if you're not going to have the energy to produce it, mm. you're out of luck. So what are some, so you mentioned cycling. What, yep. what else do you do that's that's good for the voice and good for you being able to vocalize while you do it? I mean, there's a ton of things you can do to accelerate your heart rate, whether you get on the ground, do a bunch of mountain climbers and calisthenics and things of that nature. You know, running is obviously great. I try to match the duration of the set if possible. Huh? That's if I'm going to keep it at a moderate pace. So there's a couple different ways I'll go about it. I'll have my moderate pace uh -huh. and it's like, all right, I really want to match the duration of the set. But then I'll have my like really crazy pace, which is basically I want to have high intensity and just to burn myself out. So keeping cardio safe and beneficial for your singing, mm -hmm. what are some things to watch out for? Avoiding bad weather if you're going to do your cardio um, and you want to like run and it's raining out or it's cold, yeah. you might not want to do that because that can severely impact your vocal health in a negative way. So weather, bad, keep the cardio inside perhaps. Okay. Obviously staying hydrated before, during, and after the cardio workout so that way while you're doing this exercise, your vocal folds aren't just drying out on you. And then it's great to take anywhere from a half hour, maybe to an hour in between your cardio and your vocal training. So your body has time to sort of reset before you start to physically exert energy all over again. Especially if you're going to be doing a show later, how far in between will you 
leave. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. If you actually have to perform that day or record that day, you're not just like training or rehearsing. Uh -huh. I would try to get your cardio done as early as possible. And then you just have the rest of the day to reset because you don't want to be feeling any negative effects of that cardio if you have a real performance. If you have to train for the day and you're a little fatigued from it, like not a big deal. That's a good challenge. But you sure. don't want that challenge while you need to be at your best. Right. So know your approach, voice safe cardio, and... Isolate and reinsert back into context. Okay. How is that different than know your approach? Because you're already stepping as you figure out what you're doing. What does this mean? So some parts of your set you're likely going to find are more difficult than other parts. So this is after you have started to sing them all the way through and yeah. you identify problem yeah. areas. Right. Okay. So you're going, you're almost going back to know your approach, but as a reaction to putting it all together. Yes. Okay. Because there's a difference between executing this part exactly how you want and then executing it within the context of a song. So if you have a really difficult part in the middle of a song, your body is going to be way more worn out by the time it gets there than yeah. if you isolate it. Especially if you're in the middle of a whole set. Right. Even just yeah. Instead even of a whole then. song. So by isolating problem areas, you get more reps there. So you can get your body to start to produce those more efficiently. If your body can produce that isolated area more efficiently than it can or could yeah. a week ago, then in the context of the song and the set, it's not going to feel so bad. It'll be a lot easier. It's amazing how much... Uh, how many parallels there are between this kind of approach and just like regular fitness training. A hundred percent. I make like, that students like when I teach, they're always like, it's like weightlifting. Right? Right? I'm like, yeah, dude, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a group of muscles and they get exhausted like anything else. And I think the common thing that happens is we wake up and our voices just tend to work every day. We talk, right? Right, in that way. Because of that, we forget how much effort actually goes into producing our voice. Yeah. But it starts to become really apparent when we do things that are unnatural to our bodies. Sure. So then you yeah. start to realize, oh, you got to take these little incremental steps to make this more feasible. The same way if you're, oh, well, my goal is to bench press 300. You're probably not, I'm not doing that today, right? That's going to take me a, a while right. to you have like to work, work up, up to it. it. Yeah. When we're isolating parts, there's another step that we can take to sort of expedite our progress, right? Okay. So when the part is starting to feel just a little bit better, mm -hmm. we can loop it. And now we can mm. flow right back into it as if it was the very next part of the song. Because now you're forcing your body to produce it for longer than it's actually going to have to in the context. So it's just kind of a way of almost like putting ankle weights on when you're running or putting chains on the bench when and, you're benching. And driving home the muscle memory of that specific spot so that when you get to that part in the show or in the song, that muscle memory kicks in even more because you've, you've gone over and over again. Mm -hmm. All right. Know your approach. Voice safe. Cardio. Isolate and reinsert. Great tips. This is only the beginning. If you like Lucas's approach and insights, there's a lot more in the free voice course linked in the video description below. Lucas Magyar's warm-ups to outrun vocal fatigue. We'll see you there.